worship. I am Pastor Jim Dean, and you are uh, worshiping with the church in Whittier. We are the United Methodist Church of Whittier, and we're glad that you are here. Thank you for coming and joining us online, whether you are watching live or watching later in the day or sometime this week. We're glad that you've chosen to be a part of our worship service today. As we uh, begin our worship today, I would just want to say there are a couple things going on in the church. We all are aware of those. We can do those later. Uh, but we do have a meeting of the PPRC immediately after church, and we also have a meeting of the Assembly Council after church as well. Um, so we'll share prayer concerns later, and uh, we want to begin our worship with a reflection now. So as we begin our service, as we light our candle, use this as a time to just reflect on God, reflect on your life, think about God's presence, welcome God's presence into this meeting now. Let's do that as we begin our worship. call to worship is found either on the screen or in your bulletin. I'll call your attention to read that with me together. God calls us here today. We bring, bring our full selves, selves to God, God, our strengths and our weaknesses. God calls you here today. We, we offer, offer all we are to God, God our talents and our inadequacies. God calls every part of us to bring divine love and light to the world. We respond to that call, trusting that God is at work within us. Let us, um, let us pray. Join me as we pray. God of the past, present, and future, seldom do we know what you'll ask of us each day. Many times we are in the moment when we feel the nudging of your spirit to act. As 
we spend time in your house today, may our souls be aligned with you, so that we may be readily found when you call. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I Know Whom I Have Believed, 714. If you're able to stand and join us, I welcome you to do that now as we sing, 714. verses 22 to 23. We'll also, where the big R is, we will be reading the response as we talk. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of sight, the perfection of beauty. God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before whom is a devouring fire, round about whom is a mighty storm. God calls to the heavens above and to the earth that the people may be judged. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare God's righteousness for God alone is judge. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not reprove you for your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. Now we'll jump down to 22. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I rend and there be none to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who order their way aright, 
how to show the salvation of God. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. Amen. As we come to our community prayer time, uh, there are several folks that we have mentioned that we want to pray for today. Let's continue to remember Pam Cope, Pat Fortiller, Lynn's mom, Monica, Lynn's cousin, uh, who has cancer and is on her last treatment, I believe, this week. Is that, did you say that right? Did I hear that? Your mother is. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, let's remember Charlie, a friend of Steve's, uh, who has moved and now is sick, and we need to pray for him. Let's remember Sanja, Judy's cousin, who fell and um, just hurt with bumps and bruises as well. Uh, Eva L. Howard, Katie Connor, and Bethel Stevenson all have cancer. Let's continue to remember them in prayer this week as well. Are there others that uh, we have prayed for? If you're at home and you have any prayer requests, I'd love for you to contact me via text or email, or uh, you can call and leave a message or talk to me. Uh, I'd be glad to take those as well. And if you have any silent prayer requests, we'll remember those as well. But let's take this time now to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to give us a moment of silence for you to have your own personal prayer time. Then I'll have a prayer for you. Let's pray. God of redemption. You call us to wash ourselves clean so that our transgressions fall away. May we cease doing evil, learn to do good, and seek justice. You call us to rescue the oppressed, to defend the orphan, plead for the widow. May we not forget these responsibilities you set before us. We are grateful for the reminder from the prophet Isaiah that even though our sins are like scarlet, you'll make us like snow. Even though they are red like crimson, you will make them like wool. May we be obedient and willing followers, pleasing unto you, O God. We come before you on behalf of the folks we've mentioned this morning. For Pam Cope, who has fallen, struggling with pain with her broken leg. For Pat, for Monica, for Charlie. For Sanja, for Evanel, for Katie, and for Bethel. We lift them up by name. We also lift up those who have not lifted out, out loud, but we know in our hearts and our minds that there are folks that, that need your care and presence as well. We pray these things uh, knowing that you are the good God who loves us, you are a God who cares about us, that you intimately work in our lives even when we see it and sometimes when we, and all, even when we don't. So God bless us now as we pray for these in our congregation and friends for our congregation who are hurting today and ask you to take care of them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I've asked Chris if she would come up today and read our gospel lesson. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near there, and no moth destroys where your treasure is. There your heart will be too. Warning about being prepared. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps lit. Be like people waiting for their master to come home from a wedding celebration who can immediately open the door for him. When he arrives and knocks at the door, happy are those servants whom the master finds waiting up when he arrives. I assure you that when he arrives, he will dress himself to serve 
seat them at the table as honored guests and wait on them. Happy are those whom he finds alert when it becomes at midnight or just before dawn. But now this, if the homeowner had known what time the thief was coming, he wouldn't have allowed his home to be broken into. You also must be ready, because the human one is coming at a time when you don't expect him. One of the blessings we have as believers is the opportunity we have to give back. Um, during this age of COVID, we don't pass the plate. We have the plates up front. Uh, if you give before service or after service, that'll be fine. Either way, it's, it's convenient. Whatever is most convenient for you. But our gifts are something that is a reflection of our faith. We've been talking about faith the last couple of weeks in our messages. And this is a reflection of our faith. Do we, do we believe in God? Do we trust in God enough to give a part back to Him what He has already given to us? That's what our offering is about. As we look at our gifts and think about our gifts, it's one of these things where, um, you know, we are not saved by our gifts. The Bible says we're not saved by our works. But it's something we do because we care. It's something we do because we can. Um, the Bible says, God loves a cheerful gift. The, uh, the word there literally is hilarious, you know, over the top, you know, <laughs> you know, you're excited about giving. It's a, a cheerful, overexcited cheerfulness. Um, so as you give, know that your gift should be given with that kind of expectation, that kind of heart. If you have to give begrudgingly, then maybe it's not an offering. But as God calls you to give, that's where we ask, ask you to give too. So as we give. Let's take these gifts and offer them up now to God. Thank you for your blessing. Let's stand. <laughs> for Jesus Christ. Your prophet Isaiah reminds us that offering money or possession is not enough. Isaiah proclaims to the Israelites that unless their offerings are accompanied by a willingness to learn to do good, to seek justice, to rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow, that our offerings are futile. Open our hearts to hear what pleases you and open our eyes to see the opportunities all around us. We pray this in Christ's name. Thank you.
Our New Co Covenant reading will be from Hebrews chapter 11. I'll be reading verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. The writer of Hebrews, some say it was Paul, some say we don't know. It's okay, it doesn't matter. If I say Paul, we'll just assume it's Paul. It's okay. In this passage, the writer talks about faith, defines it, and then describes it. And I want us to listen for that as we do. Faith is the reality of what we hope for. The proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. By faith we understand that the universe has been created by a word from God. So that the visible came into existence from the invisible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived in the land he had, be, had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. He was looking forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah, received the ability to have a child. Though she herself was barren and past the age for having children, because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man, and he was as good as dead. And they were as many as the number and the stars in the sky and countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. All of these people died in faith without receiving the promises. But they saw the promises from a distance and welcomed them. They confessed that they were strangers and immigrants on earth. People who say this kind of thing make it clear that they're looking for a homeland. If they had been thinking about the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return to it. But at this point in time, they are longing for a better country. That is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God isn't ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Her name was Barbara. There's nothing spectacular about her. By the world standards, anyway. She was never on television. She was never in a movie. She never had any money to herself and didn't even have a checking account. She never held a job. She didn't have a driver's license because she had a grand mal seizures, epilepsy, that, that crippled her. She only lived 49 years here on earth and died of lung and breast cancer at 49. Way too young to die. But Barbara had an amazing faith. She attended Sunday school and worshiped on a weekly basis. She prayed daily, read her Bible as often as she could. And my earliest memories of her is holding my and my sister's hands, dragging us to church every Sunday morning. You see, Barbara was my mom. Every week she would tell you, okay, kids, it's Sunday morning, let's go to church. And we'd get dressed and put on the nicest clothes we had, and off we go, and she'd hold my sister on one hand and me on the other. And later, my younger sister, tailing behind, drag us all the five blocks to Erlanger Baptist Church in Erlanger, Kentucky, where we grew up in that church, found faith, found Christ, and where I was called to ministry. Her faith paved the way for who I am today and the ministry in which I serve. Through the years, other people came into my life. I had a wonderful youth minister, Barry Cavan. He was a guy who, who uh, was just real. When he was angry, he was angry. When he was happy, he was happy. But all the time, he loved the Lord. He was our youth minister who put up with a lot of shenanigans from a lot of unruly teenage boys. You've been there before. Maybe you raised some of those, or maybe you was one of those. I don't know. <laughs> but Barry kept the faith. And in our youth group, we saw about a dozen people today who were called to ministry, who were preaching all over the country because of his impact. I had a campus minister in college, Dr. Bird Witzel. 
who taught me about faith and growing in my faith and learning to live out my faith in a way that was loving, as Christ would call us to do, to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love God with all of our heart. It's said that 95% of people in America, I don't know if it's worldwide, but the survey was done in America, 95% of people in America came to faith because a family member or a friend led them to Christ or told them about Christ. Um, in the Catholic Church, in the Methodist Church, in the Episcopal Church, you know, we do it a little bit differently in a Baptist. You know, Baptist, you know, we have to come down when you're, you know, make your own. I love the way the Methodists do it. I love that, that baptism as an infant is God's calling, God's way of saying, I love you. And then when we reach that age of confirmation, we get the chance to say, I love you back. One of my favorite Broadway shows, I, I, again, I love Broadway. Giving, giving away a story about myself. I love Broadway shows. Annie Get Your Gun, the story of Annie Oakley. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that one, but she falls in love with a guy named Frank Buffer. And he says, I love you, Annie. And she says, I love you back. When they finally realize they're in love. That's what God does to us. God says, I love you. And we have the opportunity to say, I love you back. How many of you are here today because maybe a parent or a family member or a friend brought you to church or introduced you to church? Am I right about that? Somebody in your, in your family, somebody that's close to you, somebody did that. What I want you to do, I'm going to give you one minute. Listen, one minute. Oh, 30 seconds if you, if you want to do this. If you don't, just sit there and wait one minute and pray or something, whatever you want to do. But I want you to turn and I want you to say three things. I want you to say the name of the person, their relationship to you, and one example that they taught you about faith, or one way that they showed faith to you. In 30 seconds, I'm going to say stop, and then the other person gets a turn. If you do it sooner, that's okay. If you go longer, I'm going on without you. So, Joe, turn to the person next to you. Name, relation, and how, how they showed faith to you. Okay, if the other person hasn't had a time to share, let them go now. <laughs> Would somebody, is there a name you want to call out in, as, as a celebration this morning? We didn't, we didn't share praises yet in our, in our prayer time, but as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a time of praise, shout out a name of somebody that uh, led you. I mentioned Barbara. You know, the Hebrews passage goes on to say, we didn't read it today, but it says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Isn't it wonderful that we have somebody that modeled faith for us or shared faith with us or told us about God? And you know what? We have that opportunity to do that for someone else. Maybe by the things we say, maybe by the way we live, by the things we do. Those are all things that God has called us to do. So in today's writing, the writer of Hebrews defines faith. He says, he uses the word hypostasis. You don't need to know that. It's a big word. What it really means is evidence, substance, essence, confidence. He says, faith is hypostasis. It's evidence, substance, ethnic, essence, confidence. Even when you don't see it. It's just knowing that you know that you know. You can't really put a finger on it. You can't quite define it. But you know it's true. Two weeks ago I was in court. I was juror number 12. 
I was juror number 12. I want to clarify that right now. Juror. Explain why I was in court. I want y'all to know. For those of you who are watching at home, I was juror number 12. I sat on the jury, and we acquitted a woman accused of drunk driving. Now, here's what happened. When the officer pulled her over, she smelled of alcohol. It was heavy on her breath. There were four missing beers in the front seat of her car. And when they pulled her over at a checkpoint, she said, oh, I just had a couple. Well, because of her health conditions, uh, she wasn't able to do the field walking test. He didn't take any blood to check her blood alcohol content. And because of her COPD, she couldn't do a breathalyzer. So even though she appeared drunk, she showed the signs of being drunk. The jury had to say there's not enough evidence, there's not enough substance, there's not enough confidence to say that this woman was legally drunk and couldn't drive. I was the abstaining juror. <laughs> I kind of felt the other way. But when it came down to it, in a court of law, you have to have evidence. And this is something that was not presented in court. Paul says faith is having all the evidence we need without needing to see the proofs. Now, folks, listen. This is not an unintelligible belief. This is not just, well, I just randomly, haphazardly believe that there's something out there that's working on my behalf. It's believing in the source of the promise. It's believing that God has done so many things for me in my life in the past that I know that I can trust God with my future. It's knowing that I read these stories in the Old and New Covenant of God delivering other people, and I believe that they're true, and I believe that God is going to deliver me as well. I thought the woman was guilty, and I'll tell you why. I knew the officer... And I know that he's a trustworthy, godly man. I knew the source of the accusations against her. And I believed his word. I put my faith in his testimony and knew that he was reliable. But faith is not some hope, some dream, or some wish. It's an evidence based on the promise given. And as believers, that's a big difference. We're not just wishing. We're not hoping it's going to be all right. We're not thinking that maybe this might happen. So in his defense, the writer of Hebrews goes through and he lists all the evidences of faith throughout the Bible. All the people that were there and what the demonstration looks like. He points out that there were many men and women who had nothing but the promises of God to rest on. He says, creation, Rima. God created the world out of nothing. There was no evidence of creation. God spoke, and then there was creation. And he talks about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abram and Sarah, and you can read those for yourself. He said all of those died without seeing the fulfillment of the promise. Listen, they believed even though there was no visible evidence that these things would be fulfilled. Isn't that faith? Yet, they believed so fervently that the cor that course of their lives were changed forever. Their lives were changed because they believed it so fervently. They were so convinced of the promises of God that they acted as if the promises made for the future were already there in the present. Wow. That's faith. They took God at God's word and acted according. Then he concludes by saying that Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Jesus Christ is the final proof. Jesus Christ is the promise of God. That Jesus Christ is God with us. Emmanuel. Folks, we are the receivers of that promise. It was made 4,000 years ago to Abraham. A long, long time ago. But we get to see the evidence in our lives. Our faith, we're ordained by God at baptism. We accept when we are confirmed. 
We live it out in obedience to God. That God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the promise we have today. That's what we celebrate today. God's wonderful gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate in our communion service here today as well. This is what it's about. To realize that God gave his only son to die on a cross for us to suffer in horrible ways so that we can have a joy in this world now and a promise of a future even after we're gone. If you have your hymnals, you can turn with me to page 12. We'll be doing a service of word and table number two. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to give you a time now to confess your sins privately to the Lord, and then we'll continue. Let's pray. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's take the bread and cup now in 13. Jesus was with his disciples in that last meal. He broke the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. He then took the cup, offered it, said, this is my blood, which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God, power, and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water, and by the Spirit. On the night in which he was betrayed, on which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many 
and for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in the ministry to the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed Amen. be thy name. Thy Amen. kingdom come, thy Amen. will be done. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What I'd like for us to do, I know we're in the time of COVID, so we have individually wrapped bread and juices. Uh, what I will ask you to do now is to come forward to receive those. You can take those back to your seat, and then one at a time, we'll eat the bread together and then we'll drink the cup together. If you cannot come up or walking is difficult for you, at the end, when everyone has come up and gone back to their seat, if you cannot uh, get up and come down, I will be glad to bring those to you at that time.
the body of Christ given for you. Do this. blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is 805. If you can turn in your hymn books there. 508. 508, okay. sorry. <laughs> A little dyslexia this morning. <laughs> Thank you.